We now move to the men's 3,000 metre steeplechase. The action's coming so thick and fast, it's ridiculous. This is what we love about world-class athletics. Non-stop from start to finish, wherever you're watching, please keep us company. These men and women have dedicated their whole lives to this sport and they're putting on an incredible show tonight in the Middle East. Bayo being introduced, African champion, Gannett Wale, ninth two years ago, but he's the third fastest man in the world this year, much better athlete. Sable is the uh, national record holder from India. Watch for Caro, by the way, the Spaniard, massive PB this year. Germa won the Ethiopian trials. Sufain El Bakali, silver medalist two years ago. No Moroccan has ever won this title. Zach Seddon's done really well to make the final. The big story here, at the end of a season, dogged by injury, can Capruto keep this extraordinary run of golds going? We weren't even sure he was going to be fit enough to make the starting lineup. But what we saw from him in the semis showed that the defending champion, the Olympic champion, the Commonwealth champion, might well be on his way back to his mercurial best. Great final in prospect, they all... The Moroccans in a crowd want El Bacali to win. Can Capruto defend his title on a raucous night in Doha? What a roar from the crowd. Many people here still buzzing after Barsim's great effort in the high jump to join Nadekasau and Akimenko over 2.33. But now the East Africans in the crowd have their turn to get excited. Bayo leads. African champion, Conceslas Capruto. So noisy in the stadium. Can hardly hear our own voice through the headphones. It's an incredible atmosphere. The Ethiopians, by the way, are just getting to grips with this event. So they've never won a medal in World Championship history. And in fact, Jenny Meadows, their last global medal in men's steeplechase came with a bronze 39 years ago in the Moscow Olympics. But this season, with Capruto struggling for injuries, you've started to sense that the Ethiopians are falling in love with this event. And that might change the dynamic of how these races unfold over the next five or ten years, because we know what good flat runners the Ethiopians are, and they're now starting to show that they're good steeplechasers. Yeah, again, it Whale is one of those Ethiopian athletes who's really helping to bring this event to Ethiopia. Just 19 years of age, there he is in second place behind Bayo. He won the Diamond League this year, and he's improved 13 seconds in this year alone. Fantastic for the 19-year-old. Bayou it is, followed by Whale, Kip Brato, and they're all over that next barrier. This looks quick. They're not hanging around here, and I suspect the Ethiopians have got a predetermined tactic here to try and run the sting out of Conceslas Capruto. I mean, we're talking about Conceslas Capruto, and by the way, the noise is always going to go up. Uh, when they run round the 1500 star, because that's where the East Africans are in the stands. Maybe it's a good tactic here, Jenny, because we have the top 10 fastest men in the world this year, and Capruto isn't one of them. So we saw his personality coming to the fore in the semi final, but he's not in the kind of shape, time wise, perhaps, that he has been in previous years when he's become the world champion and Olympic champion. So maybe. Trying to run the sting out of his finish is a very clever tactic. Yeah, we didn't know what shape he came in here. We doubted him, but he really looked good in those heats. He's the reigning World Olympic and Commonwealth champion. He's won everything that there is to win at this event. So he knows how to pace himself through the rounds. Just watching him flee that barrier there. He does it sideways, doesn't he? Not as good as some of the women. We saw Emma Coburn, who won the silver medal. She's a brilliant jumper of these barriers, and he just is clearing them sideways. Really good flat speed, but still put himself in contention this year. He's come to the World Championship final, and he looks like he's 
actually coming into season's best form. Wherever you are in the world, please stay with us for the next hour or so. We've got a brilliant men's 400 metres coming. Oh, and by the way, if you missed the early action, you've missed a world record. Dalila Mohammed, the Olympic champion, becoming world champion, lowering her own world best mark with a whole host of brilliant times coming home behind her. Doha is electric tonight. And I wonder what drama these talented steeplechasers have got in store for us here towards the end of this race. Well, I'm just watching this now. Germa has took the lead, followed by Whale. He's been there the whole time, has has Karipo. Just looking, Bayo, he seems to have dropped back there. I don't know that he had a fall or anything. I'm just seeing the images, he's just cleared the barrier there. He was leading for the first few laps and now he's drifted back into about 10th position. Kerma leads. Wale on his shoulder. It has slowed down a touch here. Good running by the Frenchman on the outside, Didrane. Tenth in the Europeans last year. He's coming up onto the shoulder of Hilary Ball. And all three of the Kenyans are still very much in the mix. And with two laps to go, stuttering badly into that barrier, it has to be said, Conceslas Capruto has hit the front. But not a definitive break and no sooner had he gone to the front than the tall figure of Wale decided okay enough's enough and Wale is the third fastest in the world this year he's the Diamond League winner and maybe he's asking the questions of Capruto and look at El Bacali coming up on the shoulder he's got an incredible sprint finish yeah, I was just going to have a look, actually, at Albuquerque. He's got an incredible record, fourth in Rio. He was second in London in 2017, and he's there, and he looks like he's really trying to push the pace there, just coming into second place now. Coming up to just over a lap to go. This is going to be very, very close. They take the bell in the final of this men's 3,000 metre steeplechase. So much noise in the stadium. Wale, one of the fastest in the world this year. And look at El Bacali go. And Kipruto up onto his shoulder. Kipruto's the defending champion. El Bacali got the silver behind him. Two years ago, Wale trying to take glory for Ethiopia in this event. Remember, no Ethiopian male has ever won a medal in World Championship history. And look at Gurma coming wide on the outside. The Ethiopian from Kipruto. El Bacali has gone early. Has he got anything left for the last 150? The water jump's crucial. All three of the medalists safely over. Genet Wale has faded. It's Kerman now coming through. El Bacali has settled for the bronze. Can Kipruto produce the dramatic finish? He's closing. He's coming. What a race. What heart. Oh, my goodness me. So, so close. The Ethiopian will be on the podium, but has Conceslas Kipruto outdipped him on the line? A better finish to a 3,000 steeplechase you will never see. That was so close, and Kipruto has been given it. What a dip, what a run, and somehow, from somewhere, he decided he was not to be beaten. That was unbelievably close. He is, once again, the world champion, and he's done it by a single hundredth of a second. This is a man whose personality lights up every race he enters. He's had an awful season of injuries, awful. He had a swimming pool built in his back garden. He was desperate to do aqua jogging. Unbelievable drama here in Doha. A world lead from Conceslas Kipruto, a hundredth of a second back to Gurma, a national record, the highest finish by any Ethiopian male in any global steeplechase race. And El Bacali took the bronze this time.